Welcome to the EW Reunion's United at Home series, where we're hoping to bring a little bit of relief into your homes during these complicated times and also raise some funds for several COVID-19 related efforts. This week is a celebration of the iconic soap opera, All My Children. We've brought so many members of the cast together and they've chosen to support Feeding America, which is putting food on the tables of families and those affected by the pandemic across the country. If you're able to donate, please visit ew.com slash allmychildrenreunion. And now sit back and enjoy our return to Pine Valley. The following program. Modern style. From 1970 to 2011, All My Children was one of the most beloved soap operas on television with 41 seasons, 10,712 episodes and 360 Emmy nominations. You'd be hard pressed to find a more successful or more iconic show. Welcome to the Entertainment Weekly cast reunion of All My Children. I'm senior TV editor, Jared Hall, and joining us today Susan Lucci, who played the woman who really needs no introduction, the legendary, iconic Erica Kane, Walt Willie as perhaps one of the most beloved of Erica's husbands and of Pine Valley's residents, Jackson Montgomery, Levin Ramvin as Jackson's daughter, Lily Montgomery, Alicia Minshew, uh, the reformed bad girl you actually love, Kendall Hart, Eden Regal as the apple of Erica Kane's eye, Bianca Montgomery, and Tamara Braun as the woman who swept Bianca off her feet, architect Reese Williams. Hello to all of you, and thanks so much for joining us. How's it feel to be together? Uh, even oh my gosh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's real. It's amazing. amazing. It's so crazy. It is crazy. It, a good crazy, right? right? Time, like a time warp. I'm like about to cry. I feel like but I'm 15 again. And are there, <laughs> to totally and me And either too. nobody has changed much or I need to go to the eye doctor because everybody to me looks pretty much the same. The same. Don't go to the eye doctor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Very good. Yeah, no, everyone does look great and we're, we're so happy you're here with all of us. Susan, I'd like to start with you because your show, uh, your role rather was created with the show before the show was even sold. So tell us how you found out about the series. When I got out of college a little bit later in that summer, I was um, asked to go on a, what they called a go-see. I don't know if they still do that. Mm -hmm. And um, to meet the casting director for ABC, who's, who was um, Joan Dincheco. And she told me there was a new show called All My Children that was being developed. And um, she would call me in about six months to come in for another audition. And um, she was so lovely. Uh, I wasn't sure she'd remember in six months to call, but she did. And um, and then I went in and met uh, Red for the producer and the associate producer. And five callbacks later, uh, wow. I got to um, read with Fra Heflin, who played Mona from the very beginning. And I got to see Agnes Nixon in the distance down the hallway, running into the control room. For the rest of you, kind of along those same lines, uh, the audition process, do any of you have very specific memories of, of that? Any fun or interesting anecdotes about landing your role? I, I had actually been around the set quite a bit doing extra work, day play work, under five work for several years and had auditioned for a couple of things that I didn't get. And uh, then I got a call that I was Jackson Montgomery. So I really never auditioned for that but and a, a screen test that i did previous to that which i think it might have been on the weight of that that i got this role uh louis edmonds who played uh uh ruth warwick's consort through 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 most of of the show langley wallingford uh came out just before they went to tape came out and said oh we're so glad to see you we so hope you do well and you're part of our family and when somebody like that somebody iconic like that comes out and whispers that in your ear just before you go well, I blew the audition totally, which is why, no, it was, it was really, uh, really felt great. Yeah. It was actually my first audition ever. Um, of course. Wow. I was, of course. Amazing. I was 14 and obviously I was playing Lily Montgomery who had autism and I was extraordinarily nervous and I was with Judy Bly Wilson, who is iconic and legendary in her own right. And I went with my mother to the Disney lot in Burbank, which was literally, you know, as a wannabe child actress, like the place that you envision yourself going. So whereas I have like photos of me in front of Mickey and all that. And um, 
I just, um, yeah, that was my first audition and I was so nervous that I think it worked in my favor for Lily yeah. because she didn't make a lot of eye contact and was just very like, um, in introverted. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and then I waited several months, um, until I screen tested with Michael B. Jordan. So oh, that's, yeah. uh, twice. I remember yeah. that. I remember, yeah. I remember you guys. You yeah, guys were was, good together. Yeah. You were wonderful. You yeah. were just wonderful. Yeah. I tested with Susan and I was obviously like, I was, I don't have a single memory of the whole thing because I was in a blind panic the entire yeah. time. <laughs> so, I mean, and you were so lovely that like, I, I think I had seen you the night before on the Tonys and I was like, this woman is like a goddess. She is not, she can't be real. And then you were so warm and lovely. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I want this so bad. Oh, I want it so bad. Oh, you and were then, so wonderful, uh, Eden. No, well, thank you. I, I thought that I was, I thought I was just going to mess it up because I wanted it so bad. You know, like, you know, like if, if I you. I do know that feeling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I actually tested with Josh Jamel. And, and, and at the time, you guys, I didn't know that it was the role of Kendall. They told me it was the role of Candy. And I was like, oh, okay. They just said, she's fun, she's feisty. So go in there and be yourself and just have fun. And of course, with Josh, you know, like he, he kind of draws, he draws you out. Like he just drew out a lot of fun stuff in me. And then after I got the role, they said, okay, now we can tell you. You're playing Susan Lucci's daughter. <laughs> and I about fell on the floor <laughs> with, with excitement and nervousness. But Aww. as soon as I met you, Susan, I mean, I was with all of you guys my first day, except for Tam and Levin, but the three of you guys were there. As soon as I met Susan, she, I'm going to cry. She embraced me and was warm mm. and look at I'm crying. This is, this is serious. I blame all of you. Tamara, do you uh, have a story about your uh, arrival under the show, the audition process? Well, um, I, I didn't, ha I didn't audition. Um, they, I, they were looking for, to do this short term and they, they called me and they said, we, I was actually in London and I got a call. Um, saying you know, we're, we're interested in doing this this role it's going to be historic and um it's really important we it's a short-term thing but we, we thought that you might you know we might be interested and we'd really love to have you and they told me it was going to be the first um same-sex wedding on daytime tv and i immediately was immediately was like yes <laughs> it is my honor to pronounce you married it was a big it was a big deal i mean i thought wow if um if we could make a difference you know if i could be part of you know opening helping to open people's hearts and minds who may not be open to something that should just be accepted i want to do that that was quite a thing to share it yes, really yes. was we really did in a very short amount of time develop this sort of like back story with each other and and depth of feeling for each other mm -hmm. um and uh, yeah, I'll never forget that wedding day. I, I think I feel very much the way um, that, that we all do in this, we're on the same page, but when, when Jean told me um, the realities of what it was like to be um, a teenager or uh, in your young 20s and, and come out to your parents, um, that a lot of, a lot of gay kids uh, chose to commit suicide rather than do that mm -hmm. at that time because they felt that their parents wouldn't love them anymore. And then Jean and I were just sitting there with tears streaming down our cheeks. And I said, Jean, I am so honored to be part of this storytelling. And if, if it can help one parent realize that this is still their baby, their child that they mm -hmm. love, they should not mm -hmm. judge them in any way, just love them the way they always love them. If I can be part of that. Um, yeah. Please, I, I am so honored. And, and it's through Erica that, that the difference was made yes. because it was because Susan had the, the, the guts and the bravery to tell both sides of the story, mm -hmm. to tell the non-acceptance right. and the very, very long road toward acceptance. And it was only because of that and because of her courage and, that, and conviction in, in, in being able to see the story all the way through um, warts and all that she, that the audience was able to take this character that they had grown up with that they identified with mm -hmm. and then to see her go through that journey 
to acceptance and start to see themselves in that and start to see the opportunity, the, 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 the idea that one day maybe they could get there and that they could see see it through to the other side yeah you know it was it was really 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 special and i think eden and i cared so much about doing the best we could with what we were given and you know hopefully you know hoping that our input you know somehow made it through the screen and um and i, and I know it did I, and we both talked about the letters we got i mean i, I received a letter um that was so touching it was from this woman who was married to another woman and he had a daughter and she said my wife is a huge fan of the show and she watches it every night and she said no offense it's not my thing she said i'm a reader so i read at night and she watches the shows that she tapes she said so i just put our daughter down to bed and um and i was walking by and she said and you and eden were in a scene together and she said, and I, I looked at the television and I was so struck by what was going on, I had to stop and watch. She said, and I was brought to tears by what the two of you were doing. Because as a mother of a daughter who has two moms, she said, the way you told this story was with so much heart and so much respect and love that I, I, I had to stop and I had to watch. And she said, and I was compelled to write this letter and I just wanna thank you for what you guys are doing and to please keep it up because it makes a big difference. And I was like, Ugh, okay. Done. Done. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> wow. It, it's yeah. one of my greatest memories is going to work on all my children and I mean, becoming friends with Eden and Lish and getting to work with Susan. Oh my God! You know, it it seems to me that that what this really was was a perfect example of television used for good, that was also extremely entertaining. Exactly. That's you know something really good about telling that story at that time in in our medium in our genre was that it was told in real time. Mm -hmm. This yes, journey was uh, over the course of two years. And that allowed us to play the nuance of such a situation too. We didn't have to hit anybody over the head with anything. As Eden said earlier, right. you could play both sides because there was time and opportunity to do that in the writing and in the time allotment. Mm -hmm. It allowed us to take their hands and kind of walk them walk through, them through. It, I guess, yeah. is what, right. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. With people that they loved. And who else is in your house in the middle of the day but your friends and family, you know? Mm -hmm. So it was a great way to reach folks. Uh, we, we had that line of communication open. Mm -hmm. Well, I also wanted to ask you because Jackson is one of the most beloved characters mm -hmm. on on the show, and the um, only guy here. I just he is. Is. but on that topic, uh, uh, you know, because this is a, a guy who uh, is an, an adoptive dad to, to Reggie, and uh, you know, a, a very passionate father of an autistic daughter. So, what was it like to play in that world? Uh, you know, especially like the, the fatherly aspect. Well, it just so happened that all this came about as I was a fairly new father myself. Mm. And my oldest, Chance, who's 25 now, or will be at the end of this week, is probably on the spectrum somewhere. And to be doing the whole Lily storyline with the incredibly talented Levin Rambin and going through some of these very same things in my own family was just, it was very helpful and it was a whole big load all at once. And um, uh, it, it, so personally, it was just it, to be, you know, I got to practice being a father at work, <laughs> which I, mm -hmm. I hope in some significant way improve my being a father at home, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then for, you know, Reggie, when Michael came on, I mean, I, he, he lived in, in Newark at the time. I lived in Jersey City. Uh, I met him at the donut shop in the morning. We'd ride into work and ride back at the end, end of the night. So we I got remember very that. close. I do yeah, too. it was, it was really and talk about being I able to get too. very close very quickly. And you know, his mom loved me, and oh, I'll trust you to take him in. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> you know? So and that, but but to work with those two terrific young actors who've both done so well for obvious reasons. You mentioned um, Michael B. Jordan, of course, Chad, Chadwick Boseman also uh, in, in that role. Uh, who, yeah, th those guys have done pretty well for themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just a little. 
just it's amazing. A yeah, it's cool yeah. to see. Yeah. I um, still offer to pick him up at the donut shop. And, <laughs> and, <but laughs> I haven't, haven't heard much back. So. <laughs> On board abs, I don't think he's eating a lot of donuts. Oh, Very good point. Very good point. Yeah. Um, on the same topic of uh, the, the the your character's daughter, Levin, um, what w was that actually part of the attraction to you? The Playing, playing an autistic character? And, and what kind of research did you do at that age to understand this character? Well, uh, I was like 13 going on 14. Um, so I don't think I was actually, you know, seeking out any type of role in particular, but I just, um, I knew that I was like auditioning and I was excited for the, for the opportunity. And all my children was, I actually grew up watching it on like VHS with my mom after school, like hiding it from my dad, like low key in her bed after school. And so actually, um, strangely enough, I grew up next door to someone who was on the spectrum and he was a big part of my childhood growing up. And when I got this role, just instinctively, intuitively, I just brought a lot of those elements in from him um, and my experiences with that, that I had grown up with all my life and that's not something that you could really teach someone I think that's you know possibly what set me apart um, because I I had such a close like personal you know embodiment of it that um, it was just kind of second nature to me I, and I you know I think it was really amazing just the same as Eden had that opportunity to shine a light on that community I felt so it, it enriched me as, as an actor and as a person to be able to play this role because I did connect with that community and, uh, and the research that they're doing and the, and the people and the kids and the parents and the families and this storyline really um, brought so much to that community as well. So I'm really like grateful and honored that we were able to tell that story together. Yeah. Um, Alicia, we should mention that uh, the other half of your beloved super couple, Thoris and Kay, unfortunately couldn't yes. be here today, but did want to send yes. his love to everyone. Um, Kendall and Zach were really, really loved by fans. So mm. tell us about the first time you guys met and when you kind of had that awareness that, oh, these two are going to be like, this is going to be something that fans <laughs> are really latching on to. I'm laughing because I remember walking, passing Torsten in the hallway, he turned to me and he goes, we're going to have fun today. And it, cause it was the first time we had scenes together. And, and I said, yeah, we are going to have fun. We just kind of had this, there was a fun uh, chemistry between the two of us that was just sort of natural. I mean, he's fun anyway. You guys all know Torsten. He's, mm -hmm. he can have chemistry with, you know, this pillow. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, he's so charismatic anyway. <laughs> it's true. He can, that he is. probably had chemistry with all of you guys too. But, there, but he sort of Walt brought especially. that. Too much chemistry with Reese. Thank you very much. Let me, let me. <laughs> let me too much with Reese. <laughs> first time I met Torres. What are you going to do? I was hosting the red carpet for the daytime Emmys. Oh, I, I was in date. Before. Was oh, you were? Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Uh, <laughs> So I said, so Torsten, I understand you're coming to all my children. What are you going to be doing there? He looked at me and said, taking all your air time. Oh, of course he did. I can see it. I can see it. Yes. Take yes. all your screen time, mate. Just like yes. that. Go on. Listening to all of this, Aren't we all so, so lucky to have been given these storylines, mm -hmm. these characters, and these yeah, storylines sure. to play? Yes. And, and that's, we were in the best hands with Agnes Nixon, who yeah. was the visionary. Yeah. She broke the ground. She put these storylines out there. And we got to be the lucky recipients of the words on the page and the scenes to play. Yeah, totally. Sure. And she called this show All My Children. And I think she created a family. Like, she... Mm -hmm. I did not know. I thought I was getting the job. I did not know that I was getting a whole family mm -hmm. and that like, I didn't even have yes. to act anymore at a certain point. Like mm -hmm. kind of like what Levin was saying. It was like, I could look at Alicia and mm -hmm. Susan and Tamara and Levin and Walt and they were my family and mm -hmm. I didn't have to pretend. I, all yeah. the love was there, all the history was there, all the annoyance was there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there. We had to share a bathroom, okay? All the humor was there, we did a lot of laughing. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, that's so true. You can just look at some, there were times where you can literally, I mean, Susan, Eden, Atan, like but all of you guys, where I could literally look at one of you, waterworks, Water like, works. you know, if, yeah, if, if, know. if it's, if it's a good, well-written scene, you are so connected with that person. Love it. I'm sure you had this with Waltz a lot too, right? Like you look at the person and that's it. You just, you feel, you guys are going through something together and there's such a connection there already that it's, it all just, the emotion is so pure and so real because we're all so connected and it was really, really special. I think it was really such a special, special thing, right? Alyssa, that's so beautifully said. I think it's true. I think oh. that looking in each of your <laughs> eyes, you know, when we were playing scenes, yeah. everybody was present. Everybody yeah. was really there. Uh, yeah. Nobody was phoning it in. No, no. It, it no, was a no. very- But, but you know what? Thing. It came from the top. It came mm. from you, Mama. Oh yeah, it's true. Uh, it's true. Because because she showed up on set prepared. Yeah. She Fine. treated everybody in the crew with yeah. respect and kindness. She knew everybody's name. I mean, she's Susan Lucci. She's she's like a little dynamo, you know. And so nobody else. She set the tone for everybody. Well, and, and certainly the important storylines like that uh, are certainly, I think, what contributed to uh, you know. 18 Emmy nominations before winning in 1999, and then still nominated uh, a couple more times after that. I've, I've got to talk about um, the Emmy win, that, uh, that 19th nomination winning that time. Uh, you know, those iconic words, the streak is over. And the outstanding diva is, the streak is over, Susan Lucci! Do you still hear it play <laughs> over in your head? <laughs> I do. I hear Shamar Moore. I mean, yes, when he opened the envelope and said the streak was over. I mean, you know, that year we were in the garden um, and uh, I, I, we were usually before that always in Radio City, but that year we were in Madison Square Garden. And when he said the streak is over, I thought he was announcing the playoff scores for basketball. <laughs> oh and I thought, isn't that nice? You know, they've decided to fill everybody in. With <laughs> 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 isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh That's very cute. Random timing. Well, it's but, true. And yeah. so, and, and then when he said my name, I didn't hear it. I, mm -hmm. after I think it was the ninth time, I started to black out. I don't know if it was self-protective. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I would go numb. <laughs> my biggest fear is that someday I might just think they called my name and go up there. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, but certainly um, the, uh, the arena erupted, of course. I mean, you had like Rosie O'Donnell who has said how much soap operas mean to her and, and you like, you know, crying. And, and at one point you said they're, you know, they're trying to wrap me in the entire crowd. Kelly, there's that shot of Kelly Ripa yelling no. Um, oh, no. oh, obviously oh, such a, what, what's your lasting memory of that night? Well, it, it was just incredible. I, I didn't think that I'd be able to walk up. I, I, mm. I could feel my legs going to jello. And I thought, if, can I even go up there? And if mm. I'm up there, can I speak? Do I know even where I am? I mean, I was yeah, totally yes. blown away. And when I did turn around and saw the industry who, you know, we're all in the trenches together. And the fact that they would cheer that I won was just, I'll never forget the, the warmth that was, was pouring out to me. I, I didn't expect anything. And I just saw all this cheering. And, 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 and yes, Kelly asking them not to, yeah. to wrap me so I could thank my children and thank yeah. Joan Dincheco, who thought I wasn't so ethnic that I couldn't play Erica Kane. Thank you so very much. Real um, quick, Mary, just want to oh, say yes. that Eden has to hop off. Yes, oh, you got to go. Oh, Aiden. Nice Aiden. for you to join us. Thank so you so much. To you. So good to see you. Hi, wifey. Cool. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask all of you about uh, leaving the show when, when each of you left. Some uh, was all the way uh, through to the end. But um, tell me about your each of your last days. Oh, last day? I was there until the very bitter end. I mean... Uh, I had a good job. I wasn't going anywhere. I was just, I got out of the room just before people started to get shot. So I thought, great, they bring this back. At least I'm not dead. So that's a good thing, you know.
Right. Um, I mean, you know, I spent almost 25 years on the show and frankly, if it, if it hadn't gone off the air, I mean, I still want them, I'd probably still be there because it was in fact my socialization. I mean, all the people there were, those, they were the only people I dealt with because we were there so much. It was lovely. I wish I would have been there to the end sometimes. Um, I was eight, I had just turned 18 and I just really wanted to, you know, spread my wings and see what else was out there. And I had the chance to stay and I took a gamble on, you know, myself and, and my future. And like, I, you know, it was really hard for me. It felt like graduating high school. It was the, t- mm. the time that my peers were graduating high school. And it was sort of this like incubator that I had, had grown up in. And, um, and I was playing Lily and Ava at the time. And there was a scene that I had with, both of them at the same time. And I just sobbed. I just sobbed in the scene because I just was so emotional. I think it was like my birthday and there was like, happy birthday on my dressing room. Somebody had put, but I was also like a week away from leaving the show. And um, I just sobbed hysterically during the scene. So it worked, Mm -hmm. but I was just overwhelmed with emotion. And um, I was there till the end too with Walt and Susan. I, we, I made the move to California like the two of them did as well with my eight-month-old baby at the time. But, you know, we still had a great time in California. It was another wonderful crew. It wasn't the same as New York, but we still had a great crew there. And we still had a few years of really fun storytelling. It was just a different, right, a different dynamic. Yeah, well, there was the last, the, the, the day we find, found out that we were going to have a last day, and that was a terrible day. It, yeah. just a terrible terrible day and then we still had to do i think two more months of, yeah. of working there which yeah. we were all happy to do because we loved what we did um but the last day yeah it was all very very bittersweet hard to wrap for myself i mean i had mm. i had been there from the very very beginning in 1970 and yeah. it was very hard for me to really understand that it was coming to an end and in fact, I wondered if, well, I knew they really meant it, that it was ending. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I thought maybe the powers that be would change and they would realize they should bring it back because, and, and shouldn't really be over because every indication uh, from the fans was that they were just as passionate and there for us as they had ever been. And um, I kept hearing stories about how on the last day, the um, fans had actually crashed the computer system at at ABC. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there was um, a message, a recording that if you called uh, the number, it would say to to register your being unhappy that all my children has been canceled, press one. For all other ABC business, press. <laughs> so as we're kind of starting to wrap up here, um, of, of course the show kind of had that, that, that second life, that little bit of extra life. But if the show in a, in a crazy world, let's say in theory, the execs at ABC are like, let's bring this show back. Let's put it in primetime weekly. Would any of you want to come back and reprise yeah. your role? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. sure. <laughs> you know, how much of it has to do with being in the right hands. Right. Yeah. I think I've learned yeah, that. I agree. I agree. And yeah. so um, all things being the right hands, sure. Mm. Great. Yeah, And I don't think that, that, that any of us, if the time was right, would say no to that. I mean, I, I think it's, it's such a wonderful piece of Americana. The, the, the fans who loved us so much, and we love them just as much, we do it for them. I mean, I, I can't think of very good reasons to not, unless it's scheduled or something like that. But in, in terms of actually doing it, I, I, I think we'd all say yes to that. That comes to my last question, uh, which maybe it's something you have thought about over the years since it ended. What is the legacy of All My Children? Maybe breaking boundaries, I feel like. And it, all my children definitely broke some boundaries with everyone's story here. And yeah, and, that's right. Very true. Yes, that's very true. Yes. yes, and I think you know. Um, also, I think Agnes's storytelling both reflected our culture, but also held a mirror up to it mm. at the same time. And 
and she definitely was a pioneer. So I think breaking boundaries, Alicia, is, is really a great answer. And I, I think all these boundaries were always broken with such taste and such class yeah. and grace. And Erica Kane is, you know, I think is just one of the most iconic figures possibly in American television history. And, you know, it could have been like what she was talking about earlier, you know, a one dimensional character, but with, with Susan's embodiment of that character and her, obviously her warmth and her humor and her sense of self-deprecation, all, all those Susan. nuances of her personality, plus that, you know, other side, just kind of, again, that character, with all the things she did and all the things she said was handled with such like elegance. And I think the show had an elegance about it with all the topics that it, um, that it discussed. So it was never like trash. It was never oh. for those, you know, explicit reasons. It was always with that heart, um, starting from Agnes and Susan and everyone. Oh, that's it. Love that and heart. Love and heart. It has heart. <laughs> oh, you were just gonna say that too, Tam? Hi, Liz, yeah. Hi. <laughs> She, she said heart, and I was like, yeah, every, every story had heart. Even if it was a crazy story, ridiculous, there was always something behind it that was heart. Yep. That, yeah, it's yeah. hard, and I was like, you got it. That's it. It's hard. You know? it. It's hard. And also what was great about Agnes's storytelling, because no matter how what the story was, as you said, crazy or really controversial and important, she told the story from every character's point of view. Mm -hmm. So that she was oh, never yeah. lecturing, it was never hitting anybody over the head. It was really laid out there that people could identify with. It was everybody's point of view was represented. Which you know, I think it. another very important le legacy of, of daytime, and I think all oh, my children did it extremely well, is the fact that it integrated people who maybe weren't quite in society, people who had just come to this country. I had countless people tell me how this was their touchstone. It's how they learned English. Learned English. Yes, yeah. they learned so, English. Yeah. And, and, and I think so socially, I think uh, it, it, it had real resonance with a lot of folks, all of daytime drama, but I think especially all my children. Especially because, all my children. So many yeah, people absolutely. tell me that they learned to speak English watching Erica Kane. And that was one of the most gratifying <laughs> things I heard, but I, I would ask, so do we have a country of divas all over? <laughs> I wonder if they also a learned strong, a powerful women. <laughs> they have a country yes. of strong, powerful women. Strong, powerful women. And she was really the bad girl in town, and she was very self-centered. Mm -hmm. But there was the part of her that people saw was the spirit, was the spunk, was the go-getter. Yeah, yeah, she had yeah. such tenacity. She didn't. She didn't take. She didn't take crap. I mean, yeah, she she had, was a diva. She had all those. You know, she she was she was full dimensional. She was three dimensional. And so, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you only saw that side of her, she wouldn't be what she became. But because you brought all sides to her, she was a full human being. You could excuse some of the things that weren't maybe as <laughs> as. As glowing as you know, as, yes, as, the as other glowing. Side. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And we all have yeah. our Erica Kane moments. We, uh, uh, you know, we all have our moments. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a little bit of that in us for sure. Um, well, listen, that that is all we have, and I want to thank all of you so so much for joining us. This has been great, and I can't thank you enough.